Hello and welcome to the Out of the Sandbox video guide to custom page layouts using the Column Framework. Today we're going to take a look at the 16 column framework that the themes are built upon and how you can leverage the framework using different divisions and classes to create a layout of your liking. And by layouts, what I mean is a page, a custom page, that is divided into various rows and columns. Now, I'm going to be using columns in two different ways here when I'm talking about the layouts. One being the 16-column framework that the layout of the theme is built upon. The other being the columns that you will make on this 16-column framework. So we'll get into that in a little bit more detail a little bit later on, but what I'm going to do is walk you through a sequence of examples that will get a little bit more complex at each step. Um, so by the end of it, you will have all of the tips that you need to leverage this framework to create the page layouts. So to talk a little bit about what I mean by the 16 column framework, your out of the sandbox theme has an overall width to the layout. Now there are some elements that will span the entire width of the window. So those elements are breaking out of this framework, but other than those elements, everything else exists within this grid that has a specific overall width, and all of the elements exist inside of containers that have their own widths that are specific and relative to the overall width of the layout. Then, as you adjust the width of the window, or as you look at the site on a screen that is more narrow, all of the elements of the site will adjust and reposition and resize and then eventually stack to make sure that all of your content is visible regardless of what screen is being used to view the content. So this is called responsive behavior. The theme is already built like this, but now I'm going to give you tips on how to build internal pages that will have columns and rows of content that will all behave with this responsive behavior. So to jump in here, all of the examples that we're going to take a look at are going to be in admin online store pages. And it's here that you create custom pages. Not only that, whenever I'm talking about elements and items throughout this walkthrough, that could be anything. That could be images, it could be a paragraph of text, it could be a list, it could be any element that you can add to a page with HTML or with the editor here. Um, what I'm going to be describing isn't the content that you can add to pages, but the way that you can create layouts for the content. So I'm going to be using a paragraph of lorem ipsum placeholder text for my examples. I'm going to be using this placeholder image for my examples, but let your imagination run wild with all the various types of content that you could be using in these different layout examples. Let's move in here with our first fairly straightforward example, and that's creating a page that has a single row of items that are evenly spaced and are taking up the same amount of space. So they, they evenly divide the width of the layout. And you can divide it in two, three, or four using this trick. So here I am on a page. Try not to pay attention to the preview that appears in the editor here, but instead Flip over to the HTML editor using this button. And as you see, I like to separate it here to make it a little bit more obvious, but we have a paragraph of text and we've got an image here. So using either this normal page template or the page.multicolumn template, we can enter this special tag that will separate this content into two evenly divided columns for us. And that tag looks like this, open bracket, exclamation point dash dash space s p l i t it's a split tag that looks like that so just that on its own again don't pay attention to this preview but view the page and as you see we've created a layout one row with two columns here that are taking up the exact same amount of space we can repeat that whole process so let's say we want another image to appear right beside it Let's place an image with another split between these two images. We can save that, and this template will automatically understand that that means to create a three items per row layout, which looks just like that. As you would guess, this works 
again. This time we're going to do it with a paragraph again. Put the paragraph below that image and make sure to input that split tag. So the template knows to create a new column. And there we go with four evenly spaced columns. So they are exactly the same amount of width given to each one of these containers. And of course, as I mentioned, given that these are in responsive containers, as I constrain the width of the window, all of the content adjusts to keep things in the layout that I prefer up until the mobile layout, where the content will become stacked. So the split tag is a great shortcut to create a page layout that has a single row where the items take up an even amount of the width each. Let's take a look at a scenario where you would like to create a page that has maybe multiple rows or where elements are taking up uneven amounts of the layout. To do that, we're going to have to take advantage of the column classes and do a little bit of HTML. So I've got another example here where we are going to split the layout into two evenly spaced columns. But this time we're going to do it the hard way. We're going to do it using the column classes so that you can get an idea of how this all works. So once again, flipping over into the HTML editor, we've got our paragraph and we've got our image. The first step here is to wrap each one of them in a divider. Now I'm just going to show you this step by step, but these aren't, you may not follow these steps in the same order when it comes to doing this yourself once you get the hang of it. So now we've wrapped them both in the divider. Now we've got to give them a class that allocates a number of the 16 columns of the overall 16 column framework to each of these sections of content. So if we would like to create two even columns out of 16 total columns, that means we need to give eight columns to each one of these pieces of content. So I'm going to make this one div class equals eight columns. And I'm going to do the same thing for the image so that both the image and the paragraph of text get eight columns allocated. Then to make sure that the content has the correct margins for the page, we need to make sure to add alpha to the leftmost element and add omega to the rightmost element. So when we save that and give it a view, we see we have once again created a two column layout. But now, if we would like to make this an uneven layout, it's as easy as changing the relationship of these columns here, making sure that they still add up to a total of 16. So let's try 7 and 9. And we'll see that the image now occupies more space than the text compared to our previous example here. So you can do that with any combination of column classes, as long as they're adding up to 16 to fill the width of the layout. And here's a screenshot here of all of those classes. And as you see, we even have some fractional classes. So we've got classes like 1 third, 2 thirds, 1 fifth. So you could use those to your disposal as well if you would like to divide the layout into 5 or into 7. As you can see in this helpful article, we have a few other common examples. We've already taken a look at two columns using the column classes, but we can use this one-third column class as well to divide up the layout into three. Or four. Making sure in both cases, of course, to have alpha added to the leftmost element and omega added to the rightmost element. Now, let's try to combine some of our examples to create a layout that has more than just the one row. So what I'm going to do is take the three per row layout that I've already created on this page here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to place it underneath an existing page that looks like this. So we already have the image on the left with some text up here on the right, and I intend to show three images in a row below this area here. 
So I'm going to go to that page. And as we see, we've got the nine columns given to the image, the seven columns given to the paragraph. And directly below that, I'm going to paste in the three images in a row that we've already created. And go ahead and save that and take a look at the result. And as we see, it did not appear quite as intended. And the reason is because the gap that is below the text here is the next available space for some content to appear. So the first image from our row of three images tried to appear there and then subsequently broke the layout for the rest of the page. So to get around that, I'm going to show you what you can do to define rows to make sure that rows will start over and that a new row will start at the leftmost position of the page. To do that, you need to wrap the content of your row in a section clear fix divider, or a divider with the class of section clear fix. So to do that, I'm going to make some space between the two rows, and then wrap each one in the divider as I described. Technically, you only need to do this to the preceding row, but it's a good habit to wrap any row with the section clear fix in case you happen to add more content it will make sure that the next content is added in the leftmost position in the subsequent row so with each of those rows wrapped in the section clear fix divider we can go ahead and give it a view and see that it is now appearing as intended for this next example let's take a look at the offset classes, which are a way of moving over in columns without having to occupy those columns with content. So for this example here in the, HTM in the HTML editor, you see I have two images. And what I'd like to do is allocate each one of these images four columns. I don't want them to take up half of the layout each. I'd only like them to take up a smaller portion of the layout. But I'd still like them to appear centered in the layout. So to do that, first I'm going to give each of these the four columns that they deserve. And we'll see what that looks like just to get an idea that, of course, those images have appeared to the far left. So now what we'd like to do is to offset their position to have them appear in the middle of the page. So to do that, I'm going to add an offset by four. To the first image here and save that. That's going to allow that image to move over by four columns and then start adding content from there. So that's how you can use the offset feature to move around and to skip columns. You can offset by as many columns as you want from 1 to 15. On the topic of the offsets, there are a couple of other page templates that apply to this conversation about the column framework. So here I'm on a page. I'm going to set it to the narrow template here. We're going to save it. This page contains a simple paragraph of text. Let's see what it looks like here. So instead of it occupying the 16 column framework, it's occupying the 12 center columns. So it's a 12 column framework that's been offset to occupy the center columns. So if you wanted to divide it in half, you would give a, a six column class to each. Of course, our helpful support center is filled with articles about the column framework that discuss the definitions of the column framework, creating various layouts using HTML, how to use the split tag as a shortcut to creating layouts, why we use the alpha and omega classes, how to divide your page into some fractions, and finally the offsetting feature. So go ahead, head on over to help.outofthesandbox.com and take a look at our plethora of resources to help you out with creating custom pages. My name is Sean Campbell. Thank you for joining me for this video guide. Take care.